Welcome to the California garden in the month of March. Let's begin with the harvest we made this month. Beginning with beets. We were growing beets all over our garden. This is the one that we were growing next to our taro root plants in a container. And as you can see here, you can grow great beets almost anywhere in any container or in the ground. We were also growing a lot of beets in our green stock planter. These were the beets that were growing since last year. We planted them in around November. And you can see that they've grown quite well. Now most of our beets that we grew this season were growing in the green stock leaf planter. Now the leaf planter has 42 slots and they are perfect for growing beets. As you can see here the beets have not only grown very well, they have also formed very nice tops as well as the beet roots. So all in all this is a perfect size to grow beets because beets are not that deep rooted. They are fairly, I won't call it shallow rooted, but not too deep rooted. So perfect for growing them in this green stock leaf planter. And as you can see here, the harvest looks pretty good. The beets are very nice, fresh and delicious. And this is how the beets look like once they are cut open. As you can see, it's a beautiful pattern. So the beets are not only very delicious, but are also very good looking. And we completed harvesting all the beets from our green stock planter, the green stock leaf planter that is, because we were planning to get it ready for our next growing season, which is the spring season. So for those of you who are asking me what are some good plants to grow in the green stock leaf planter, beets is right up there as one of the best plants to grow. Because it's not deep rooted and it has enough space to produce nice looking tops and roots. And you can see the harvest here. We kept harvesting beets from our green stock leaf planter. And we also had some beets growing in just regular containers. And three of these beets are the golden beets. And one is the red beet, the Detroit dark red. And you can see here all these beets, they look quite good. Even the golden beets, they have a very unique flavor. And they are very nice and good for your health. And this is the red beet the Detroit dark red and you can see our harvest here it looks quite good moving on to broccoli the initial broccoli that we harvested were side shoots from our broccoli plants in the green stock planter we had some plants that had grown quite large and this is the classic green stock planter it has more space than the leaf planter and the extra space allows the broccoli plants to grow very large. And you can see all these florets here, they are quite nice. And the broccoli plant will keep producing these side florets for quite some time. And this is the broccoli that was growing in the raised bed. As you can see here, a lot of broccoli florets on the sides. And you can keep harvesting the broccoli florets for quite a long time. And it's a classic gardener's dilemma whether to keep this broccoli plant as is or remove these and plant some spring and summer vegetables. So it's always challenging and hopefully I can get to keep these plants for just some more time. But eventually the space will have to be reclaimed for some spring and summer vegetables. And here you can look at the harvest. It looks quite good. We got a lot of side shoots in our broccoli plant. Now some of the side shoots that are produced can be quite large in size. As you can see here, this plant produced quite a lot of side shoots that were quite large. And that's expected later in the season. But most of the broccoli side florets and side buds will be of this size. They will be smaller compared to the main broccoli head. And we really enjoyed eating these broccoli florets. They were being harvested for a long time after the main head was produced. And this is the best part about growing broccoli. It's a plant that keeps on giving, giving for a long time. And these broccoli florets make excellent stir fries. They are very crunchy, nice and delicious. And now let's look at our cabbage harvest. We were growing our cabbage in our raised bed. So we harvested the first cabbage. This is the early cabbage. And you can see here the head looks quite good. 
and the early cabbages are generally smaller in size compared to the regular cabbages and then we also had the conical head cabbages that were growing in the raised bed as you can see here the head is in the shape of a cone which is quite interesting these cabbages are one of my favorites to grow because they grow quite quickly they also produce a relatively nice head of cabbage and they are also very delicious so this is one variety that I would highly recommend that you try growing in your home garden. They are very easy to grow and they produce a very nice delicious head of cabbage. And these are two cabbage heads that we harvested. Moving on to cauliflower. The first cauliflower we harvested was from our green stock planter. I know you keep seeing the green stock planter but that's because we were growing 30 plants. Yes, 30 plants in this one green stock planter in just about two and a half square foot of space. And the next cauliflower that we harvested was from our raised bed. As you can see beautiful looking head which was also very delicious. We also grew the cheddar cauliflower also called the orange cauliflower. It's basically an orange looking cauliflower and it has nothing to do with either cheddar or cheese. So this is just a cauliflower that looks orange in color. It's called cheddar cauliflower just because of the color. But it actually just has more vitamins and minerals than regular white cauliflower. So if you're looking to grow a cauliflower variety that's healthy or healthier than the white cauliflower, then this is a good cauliflower variety to grow. However, I did notice that these cauliflowers produce smaller heads than the white cauliflower. But there's still a great variety to grow. We also had some purple cauliflower growing and both of these were growing in our whiskey barrel container. So you can grow two cauliflowers in one whiskey barrel container very easily. They will both grow and produce good sized heads. And here is our first cauliflower head harvest. As you can see the cauliflower looks quite close to the white cauliflower just different in its color or appearance. This extra purple color that the cauliflower has is very beneficial because it dramatically increases the amount of vitamins and minerals and the reason for that purple color is the anthocyanins that are present in the cauliflower. Cilantro we were growing a lot of cilantro, we consume a lot of cilantro and in our green stock planter other than the beets and the spinach we were growing a bunch of cilantro, a lot of cilantro plants. And the cilantro plants are also shallow rooted so they grow great in a container like this and you can look at our harvest they look quite good, very nice and fresh cilantro. And I'm tired of running to the grocery store every time we need cilantro in the house. So growing cilantro in a herb planter like the green stock leaf planter has been very convenient. It has actually saved us a lot of money because I don't need to run to the grocery store every time I need to get cilantro. Kohlrabi. One of my favorite cool season crops to grow. The kohlrabi is a plant that not only produces very delicious heads that look like cabbage but they are not really cabbage. It's a type of cabbage, it's a type of brassica but it's a totally different vegetable. It's actually a German cabbage. And you can eat these raw. Kohlrabi can be eaten raw but the best way we like to prepare kohlrabi is by cooking it. And here is a huge kohlrabi. You can see how huge it is. Some of the kohlrabi heads can get quite large and as I was mentioning the kohlrabi can be eaten raw but the way we like to cook it is just chop it up, we boil it with some lentils and some spices, maybe throw in a piece of ginger there and then once it's cooked we just top it off with shredded coconut and some spices like turmeric, chili and salt and it makes a great dish that you can eat with either tortillas or rice. And you can see the head of the kohlrabi here, it's quite huge. And this is what you should be looking for. You need to grow kohlrabi that produces this sized head at least. Here is one more head from the corner. 
and nice round looking kohlrabi and if you grow kohlrabi in the right season which is the winter season or the spring season or the fall season they will produce a good head without bolting so all in all i was very happy with the way the white kohlrabi is grew and we also had purple kohlrabi is growing now i'm not a big fan of purple kohlrabi because they don't grow as well or as prolific as the white kohlrabi some of them do produce decent sized heads but most of the purple kohlrabi that we grew this season did not do that well so i think it's a better choice to just stick to the white kohlrabi varieties and they'll grow quite well now we also had some white kohlrabis growing in the whiskey barrel container and i was growing about four kohlrabis in this container and as you can see the kohlrabi heads are not that large and the reason for the heads not being very large is the fact that this container doesn't get full sun so you can see i was trying to rotate the container so that at least some of the kohlrabis get some sun full sun but you can see that a kohlrabi plant that doesn't get a lot of sun will produce smaller sized heads which is still great to grow kohlrabi but you can expect a little smaller sized heads if you're not getting the 6 to 8 hours of sunlight that you need and there were some other random containers that we were growing our kohlrabi plants in and they all did a decent job as long as they were getting about at least 4 to 6 hours of sun and some of these heads are quite big you can sometimes just twist the top off to get the kohlrabi can see here very good looking head mustard we were growing the southern giant curled mustard also called the indian mustard and the reason it's called the indian mustard is because it is used to prepare a dish which is very popular in india and the flavor that this mustard imparts to the dish is quite unbelievable it is quite a good green to grow now when you're growing mustard I also recommend that you grow spinach because you can mix in those greens together. And here is a harvest. It looks quite good. And spring onions. We had a lot of onions growing from the previous year as well as from this year, and it was time to start harvesting them to clear out space for the other vegetables while enjoying some great quality spring onions. Now if I had left these plants as is they would have formed bigger bulbs but it would have taken them another couple of months at least so what I did is I started harvesting some of these spring onions or the bunching kind of onions and you can see that if you plant them further apart or far away they tend to get longer necks now some people prefer that I actually prefer that because you get more volume of the onion the healthy part of the onion which is the bottom part the white part and you can use both the white part and the green part together which makes it a very good option to grow them far away and you can see the harvest here we have both the red spring onions and the white spring onions and together they make a delicious treat and we bunched up these to give away to our neighbors since we had a lot of spring onions this season and we continue to grow them in our home garden and the final set of spring onions were growing in our green stock planter this is the classic green stock planter and the onions would have grown in the leaf planter as well and i'm going to try that out for this season and show you how it goes but for the previous season our onion plants our spring onion plants were growing in this classic green stock planter and it did a great job as you can see we got a very good sized bulb for some of these onions or most of these onions and the reason i like spring onions is just the fact that it's a little healthier it has more nutrition than regular onions and you can eat them raw I just love eating them raw along with anything else that I eat. It just adds a lot of flavor. It adds a lot of crunch to whatever you're eating. So all in all it's a great option to easily get some produce in your own home garden. So after harvesting and washing, this is how our spring onions look like. 
They are absolutely nice, fresh and delicious. Moving on to tangerines. We had our gold nugget tangerine that was growing behind our bench area and this has been growing for many years now. It gave us a huge harvest last year and this year it is a smaller harvest. That's just how this plant behaves. It will give you plenty of oranges one year and then a less number of oranges the following year. But you can see these oranges, they are not only quite good looking. And the gold nugget tangerine is probably one of the best tasting tangerines, one of the sweetest tangerines that I've tasted. So if you are considering adding a tangerine to your home garden, this is a great variety to add. Peas. We were growing the shelling type peas and most of the peas now were growing in the raised beds along the trellis. And you can see we were able to harvest a lot of peas. This is the season for peas. Spring season is one of the best season to grow peas as well as carrots. And although I try to bank on the winter season to grow most of my peas and carrots, this is actually the perfect time. The pea plant just loves this kind of spring weather. And you can see the pods, they produce a lot of pods. Very delicious pods and we did not grow the snap peas this season but most of the peas that we grew were the shelling type peas which let you harvest the peas inside the pods. You can see here very nice thick and good quality peas and you can start shelling them now and I wanted to show you how they look like from the inside and I like to harvest the peas when they are a little petite like smaller. They taste a little sweeter at this stage and the sugar content starts going down once the peas become larger. But you can harvest a mix of peas, some small and some mature. That way you get a good mix of peas for your home cooking or just eating raw. These taste amazing when eaten raw. Spinach. We were growing multiple varieties of spinach in our green stock leaf planter. So other than the beets and the cilantro, spinach was the third plant that we were growing. And you can either harvest the leaves from the side as you see here. So the cut and come again approach. Or you can just remove the whole plant as you see here. And the reason we are removing the whole plant is to make space for plants in the upcoming season. And it has started getting warmer, so spinach doesn't like the warmth. It will probably go to bolt, which is something we don't want. The spinach retains the best flavor when it has not bolted. So this is the best time to harvest your spinach. And when you harvest your spinach, you also make space for your spring plants. And planting multiple varieties of spinach will give you a lot of options. If you want to eat it as a salad or if you want to cook it, we mostly eat it cooked. But even as a salad, you can just come into your garden, harvest a few leaves and then use them in your salads and it tastes quite good. You can see a harvest here. We got a lot of spinach in our final harvest. Tomatoes. We started harvesting our tomatoes from our raised beds. These are from the plants that were grown last year. We got a lot of the salsa tomato variety as well as the Bonnie Select tomato variety. And both these tomato plants were quite good producers and they are still producing in the month of March. And you can see the harvest. These are the tomatoes we got from our raised beds. And in the first raised bed, we were growing this tomato plant, the beefsteak tomato plant. That has now turned into a tomato tree as you can see. It's become quite large and this was one of our biggest producers for this season. Now this tomato plant gets full sun right from the time of sunrise to sunset. So the entire day and you can see the effect. This plant is loaded with tomatoes. In fact it has so many tomatoes that we kept harvesting tomatoes for quite some time from this plant and it still had a lot of tomatoes. 
Here's a weird looking tomato. But most of the other tomatoes, as you can see, had ripened on the vine, which was good to see. It had just enough heat to ripen on the vine. And you can see the tomato harvest here. Quite a lot of tomatoes from just this one beefsteak tomato plant. Once again, we are back at harvesting tomatoes from the same plant. And you can see how prolific this plant is. I was initially thinking of taking down this tomato plant just to make space for newer summer vegetables. But I'll just see how this goes because this plant just keeps producing tomatoes. You can see one more round of harvest here. A lot of big sized tomatoes. And we had one Oregon spring tomato. And this is the first time we are growing this tomato variety. We planted this in December in the peak of winter and it still gave us a decent harvest. Let's go! And now let's begin a tour of our garden beginning with the raised beds. In the first raised bed, we still have the burpee A1 carrots growing, will be harvested very soon. And then we have all our spring vegetables ready to grow in the upcoming season. We have tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, some tomatoes that are staked outside, some tomatoes that will be trained to grow along the trellis. And we also sowed some cowpea beans, California cowpeas, just between the raised beds. And this is our tomato plant, the huge tomato plant, the beefsteak tomato plant, that is still producing a lot of tomatoes. Even after all the harvest that you saw in the harvest section. In our second raised bed, we have some Romeo carrots, once again, very much ready for harvest. We have our purple sprouting broccoli that hasn't produced any broccoli yet. We also have our onions. There are a lot of onions here that are growing in this raised bed, as well as some garlic, the elephant garlic, as you see. They're all growing quite well. We have some red onions in the corner and one more elephant garlic plant. These are the Brussels sprouts. We planted them late, so they are still growing. And then some peas that are growing along the trellis. And a couple of pepper plants in the corner. And the pea plants are growing well and they did quite well to produce a lot of peas. And we have a couple of tomato plants, the Oregon spring tomato has a couple of more tomatoes that are still producing. And that's how our raised bed looks like. Let's move on to the next one. This was a raised bed that had the protection from insects. We have some ground cover plants in the bottom. And we still have some brassicas that are growing, cabbages and broccoli. And we just left some of this broccoli to go to flower so that it can attract pollinators. Now once the bees are here, they will not only have a good time feasting on these broccoli flowers, but they will also go to the nearby fruit trees and pollinate the fruits so that we get a good harvest this season. Moving on to the next raised bed, we have some corn plants that we planted and on this corner we have the bottle gourd plant and due to the Santa Ana winds you can see it has fallen down. We are getting a lot of wind these days and the corn plants are doing okay. We have one row of carrots in between. The huge tomato plant from last year is still there and we just prepared this area for the upcoming planting, the spring and summer planting. So this is all good to go, ready for planting for the next season. 
And in the last raised bed, we have some corn. This is the purple corn. And we have one broccoli plant that's still producing side shoots, still going strong. And we have some cilantro. And then on the back, we have some purple potatoes that will be ready for harvest next month. We have some bunching onions or shallots on the side. And then we have the lab lab beans, which did not grow that well this season, just because of the cooler days that we had. And finally, the eggplants. This is the purple thorned eggplant. Something I'm really excited to try this year. And that concludes the tour of our raised beds. Let's now move on to the containers. In the first container, we have the onion plants, these are the bunching onions, followed by cilantro, some more cilantro in this container, followed by a cabbage plant that seems to be doing okay, not that great. The purple thorned eggplant, which we are growing for the first time. One more brassica, I believe this is a cauliflower plant, we'll have to wait and see. And this is an empty container ready for planting. And we have another cabbage plant, it's forming the head now quite well, all being watered by this hose link watering system, which I will get to in a lot of detail very soon. We have one galangal plant here, and a lot of these bunching onions again. It's a mix of bunching onions and shallots. On the other side, we have this Java plum tree, followed by the pineapple guava. A curry leaf plant that we've been growing in this container for a while. A dwarf lemon tree, the bear's lime that can easily grow in this container. And we planted some saffron bulbs and I'll shortly show you how to grow saffron in your home garden. It's a very expensive spice so something you should try growing. We have some more corn plants here on this side. Followed by the Juliet tomato plant that we just planted in this container. One of the best tomato varieties you can grow. Followed by potatoes. This is growing in a mix of compost and hay. And another set of potatoes that's growing in regular potting mix. Some cabbages that are now forming their heads. Followed by some more carrots. These are the long variety carrots. And one more cabbage plant. We just harvested one from this container. And we have some pepper plants, a couple of pepper plants. Followed by more cabbage plants. A mint plant in the corner. It's a huge plant. Our hyacinth bean has been growing okay. One of them survived the winter. So we'll see how this one grows. More bunching onions and shallots here. This is the red pride hybrid tomato, a dwarf plant that produces abundantly. More potatoes. There are several varieties of potatoes in this container. Followed by garlic. This is the garlic that we planted in November and should be ready for harvest in a month or two. The millionaire eggplant from last year, still growing strong. And it actually has a lot of eggplants as you can see. So we'll start harvesting them very soon. Followed by beets. Now this is a very unique way of growing beets. We are growing about 20 beet plants in this one whiskey barrel container. And we'll wait and see how they grow. Some more peppers and beets in this corner, the container in the corner, followed by our dwarf nectarine tree that's now producing flowers and some leaves. And finally, some tomatillo plants. I love growing tomatillos. They taste amazing. They are relatively easy to grow as well. We have an ivy gourd plant in this one container some cilantro in the next one and some longevity spinach that's growing in the final container.
And now let's look at our green stock leaf planter. And this is something that I'm trying for the first time this year is to grow 42 onions in this one green stock container. Now moving on to our classic planter, the classic green stock planter. Let's see what we have growing there. We have planted a lot of the summer vegetables now. We sowed some seeds as well for the California cowpeas, which I'm really looking forward to growing this year. Some eggplants, some jalapenos, and I also sowed some radish seeds directly. So all in all, a lot of plants that have been started in this container. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the progress. Now one container that I haven't shown you much is this earth box or a self-watering container. I'm just growing some dwarf plants in this container. We'll see how they grow. But I will be harvesting some produce from this container. So I wanted to show you how this looks like. And now let's look at some things to do in your garden this month. Spring planting is of course the most important thing. We are planting this Juliet tomato plant, one of the best tomato plants that you can grow. And some of you have asked, what does it mean by planting the plant very deep? So I'm going to show you exactly what it means. Just trim off some leaves from the bottom. And after doing this, it gives us about 8 inches or so of the plant that can actually go under the soil or inside the soil. So you create a hole large enough and then just cover your plants around it with the soil, the potting mix. And what will happen is that the tomato plant will then start sending roots along the side. It will grow much better, much healthier than a tomato plant that's just growing roots from the bottom. So it does make a huge difference. And you could get a very high yield of tomatoes by just following this very simple step. As long as your tomato plants are larger, you can plant them deeper. We are also saving our seeds. Now spring is also the time when some cool season crops will go to seed like this pale green spinach. This is an Indian spinach variety that's a part of our seed catalog. And if you're interested in seeds, you know, send me a message on Instagram or on YouTube via email so you can look at the seed catalog and order some seeds. And now for our Mars Hydro giveaway. We are giving away one Mars LED TS1000 LED grow light to a lucky winner. And before we jump into the details of the giveaway, let's look at what this product is. So the Mars Hydro TS1000 is something that I've been using for many months now. I also did a full review of this grow light in one of my earlier episodes. And it's a great quality grow light. This is one of the best grow lights that I have inside my home to extend my growing season. It has helped me germinate a lot of seedlings and a lot of these plants are still growing under these grow lights. The plants are looking quite good and here are some technical details on the Mars Hydro grow lights. So I'll let you take a moment to review all these details. And here are the details for ordering this grow light if you want to order one yourself. But in the giveaway today, all you really need to do is follow the instructions on your screen and complete these three tasks that you see on your screen to be eligible to be entered in the giveaway. Now we did one Mars Hydro giveaway in the holiday season last year and this is going to be a spring giveaway. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you're not already a subscriber because we will have a lot of giveaways coming up this year. And the winners of the giveaway will be announced in the next monthly episode. In the gardening product section, today we will be reviewing the hose link 82 feet retractable hose which also has a swivel base 
which makes it very easy to use around your garden. So this is a sponsored review. The company did send us the product over for review. And after unboxing, you can see that the hose link 82 feet retractable hose is quite a sturdy and big piece of equipment. And it's also very well built. And it comes with a 82 foot hose, also available as a 50 foot hose. And it also comes with some accessories like some washers and a very useful watering wand. And I'll shortly show you all these features. And also a swivel base. Now this is what makes the hose link very useful, very unique, is that this swivel base that comes with the anchors and nuts secures very easily to any wall or a post. It also comes with some quick connectors, two quick connectors actually, one to attach the hose to your inlet and on the other side to attach a watering wand just like the one you see here. So a lot of useful accessories are also included with your hose link product. And this is how the product looks like. We are now ready to put this product on the wall. And this is the swivel base. As you can see, the product just swivels around this base. And this is why this base needs to be attached to a wall, as you see here. And the first thing we have done is we have attached a water filter to our water outlet. And that removes all the lime and you know, the sediments that are there in the water. And this is the quick connect hose. We connect one end of the hose link to the outlet, our water outlet. You can also directly connect this to the faucet. We're just using this filter here, the garden hose filter to filter out sediments. And I'll provide a link to these products in the video description and the comments below. And once you turn on the water, just make sure that there are no leaks. And you can see here the system looks pretty good. There are no leaks. The water is now turned on. There's a lot of pressure in the hose and there's absolutely no leakage. Now one of the problems that I was facing with my existing hose is that it always used to be along the ground and it was just a little cumbersome because it was always on the ground and we were stepping on it every day. The hose link on the other hand is very well organized. As you can see here, there's 82 feet of hose inside that reel and it makes it very compact. Now to use the hose, you just pull and keep pulling till you are at your destination of where you want to water and the hose just locks in place. So you just take your watering wand, this is the one that's provided and then water your plants. And I really like the watering wand and I'll show you some more modes that it has but it makes watering very convenient. And when you're done, just give it a little tug and walk towards it and it just goes right inside. And then your hose link is now ready to be stored. Now every time I need to water multiple parts of the garden, like this green stock planter here, I can take the hose, bring it back and then it just retracts back in place and then I can take it again, water my pots and then retract it back again. So it just makes watering very pleasurable and a very nice experience. Now the 82 foot hose is so long that it can come right till the end of my garden on the other side as you see here. And the hose itself is of very good quality. The watering wand has a shower mode, as you see here, the most common one that we use for watering plants. It also has this center spray, which I use to clean my produce after harvest. And then it also has this flat mode, which is very useful for cleaning your pots or in this case, my soil container. So all in all, the wand is very useful and it is included with the product. And if you want to buy this product, here are the details for ordering your product on the website. You can use the coupon code that's on your screen. So overall, I think I like the Hoslink product. I think it makes watering very simple. It also gives you a good looking garden. From an aesthetic perspective, the hose is reeled up inside a unit which makes your garden aesthetically more pleasing. So all in all, I really like this product. And if you're planning to get a long garden hose, I think this is one of the most unique products you will find. It's a very unique product and I really enjoyed using it for the past few months. So there we have it folks, that was our episode on the California Garden for the month of March. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening!